Okay, so here we present a, a, an example of a finite probability distribution. Uh, in this example, we're considering the following experiment. Rolling two fair six-sided dice. Our goals are the following. Uh, for this experiment, we want to identify the sample space, the size of that sample space, uh, construct the, the probability distribution, in this case, uh, the finite probability distribution of this experiment, where we're going to define a random variable as the sum of the values of both dice. Uh, after that, we're going to uh, build a histogram for the probability distribution that we obtain. And last, we're going to uh, uh, consider two probability questions, two associated probability questions. So we begin by identifying the sample space of this experiment. Now we're rolling two fair dice, they are distinguishable. So the outcomes are going to consist of a, a pair of numbers uh, 1 through 6 for the first die, 1 through 6 for the second die. So uh, we're going to list this as order pair. So here are the possibilities. Our first die has a 1, a second one has a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6. There are six possible uh, ways of getting a 1 for the first die. Uh, second case, when the first die is a 2, so you could get 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6. Now this continues, the first die, the outcome being 3, the first die, the outcome being 4, the first die, the outcome being 5, and last, the first die outcome being 6. So the possibilities are for 6, and the first die is 6, 1, all the way through 6, 6. So that is our sample space. Now our second question is to uh, identify the size of the sample space. How many uh, outcomes are there in the sample space? Well, we, if we look at the sample space itself, uh, we can count that. Well, it is 6 times 6, 36. So the size of the sample space is uh, 36. Now, suppose we don't have the sample space. Uh, how, would you, how, how would you calculate the size of the sample space? Now, in this case, you have to uh, consider the possible outcomes. The first die has six possible outcomes. The second die has six possible outcomes. Now, this uh, experiment consists of uh, two simultaneous outcomes, both independent of each other. So we get to apply our fundamental counting principle, multiplication rule. To obtain the total number of possible outcomes, we multiply uh, six times six which also gives us 36. Now, this uses a counting method right here, and in this um, a procedure, we did not need the sample space itself. In some problems, the sample space is extremely big, so this is the preferred way of getting the, sample, the size of the sample space, using a counting method. Uh, our next question is to, our, our next problem is to construct a probability distribution, a finite probability distribution for this experiment. So what is it? What is a probability what is a finite probability distribution? Basically it's a list uh, or summary of the outcomes. In this case we're defining the outcomes to be this the the sum of the values of both dies. So that consists of adding the two outcomes, so we call that the outcome sum. So the outcome sum when you get a 1, 1 is 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2. The outcome sum when we get the 3, 4 is 7, because 3 plus 4 is 7. So uh, in our probability distribution, uh, we're going to create a column where we list our possible outcomes for the random variable, and uh, then the corresponding probability. So, what are the possible outcomes in, in, of this, for this random variable in this experiment, for the, for the outcome sum? Uh, well, 
the least you could get is say one and a one so the least outcome sum you could get is two the highest outcome you can get is both dice are six uh, that happens to be an outcome sum of 12 so our list will consist of uh, x being two three four five six all the way up to 12. Okay, so what is the probability of getting an outcome sum of two? There's only one way of achieving that. One out of 36. So one out of 36. What is the probability of getting an outcome sum of three? Well, there are two ways of achieving that. Two plus one or one plus two. So that's two out of 36. Now I'm going to leave this uh, fraction unsimplified because later on this will be a uh, very use very uh, helpful. I could write this as one over eighteen, but for the purpose of uh, purposes of this presentation, I'm not going to simplify the the fractions. What is what is the probability of getting an outcome sum four? Well, we have three one two two a uh, one three. That's three out of thirty six. Now, what, what happens is that we continue to, to identify the number of uh, uh, ways to achieve a, an outcome sum of 5, 6, and 7, and so on. And this is the result. To get a 5, there are 4 possibilities. So it's 4 out of 36. To get a 6, there are 5 ways of getting a 6. So it's, the probability is 5 out of 36. There are 6 ways of getting a 7. Let's observe. Uh, 6, 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 6. Six ways of getting a, a 7. So the probability of getting a 7 is 6 out of 36. The probability of getting an 8, however, now starts, it's less than that. Because how many ways can you get an 8? 6, 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, 6. There are five ways. And you, you will realize when you finish constructing this probability distribution that there is a pattern there's definitely a pattern here when we draw the histogram it will become evident what the pattern is it is sort of evident what the pattern is by just looking at the probability column okay so there we have it uh, the probability distribution of uh, in this experiment the random variable x the outcome sum now, one observation is the following. In this probability distribution, if we add the probabilities, all the probabilities obtained, we get a 1. The sum of the probabilities is 1. Any probability distribution, any finite probability distribution will have to obey, we will obey this uh, condition, this uh, property. If you have a, a proposed table and you are asked, is it a finite probability distribution? You have to check that the probability columns, all the values of the probability column, add up to be one. Of course, the probability, whatever that column is, will have to be all probabilities. That means none of these numbers can be negative, and none of those numbers could exceed a one. If you have something here that adds up to one, but uh, you have negative values for the second column, or you have values greater than one, you wouldn't have a probability distribution because you don't have probabilities in your column that requires probabilities. All right, so next, we're gonna build a histogram for this uh, probability distribution. So here's how it goes. In building a histogram, what we need is uh, to label our horizontal and our vertical axis where our uh, Histogram will sit. The horizontal axis, of course, will, have, will be the random variable. The vertical axis will be the probability. Now, on the on the horizontal axis, we're going to label all possible values of the random variable. In this case, from two all the way up to twelve. Two, three, four, five, all the way to twelve. So I'll do this: two, three, four, etc., up to twelve. Now my vertical will have to have a probability value, they never exceed 1, so my scale could be set to 1. Now, what I'll do is I'll 
construct bars around each of the values of x to represent the corresponding probability. So at 2, I'll have to build a bar that's, say, 1 36th. Now, I'm going to, 1 36th will be very close to the exact to the x-axis, but here I'm going to exaggerate a little bit for illustration purposes. So, uh, we'll say that's 1 out of 36. Uh, probability that x equals 3 is 2 out of 36. Notice that this, me leaving those fractions on reduce, make this a very convenient task. So it's 2 out of 36, and then the probability of getting a 4 is 3 out of 36, so I'll just go 136 higher than the previous one. Now this continues. When we complete that uh, histogram, we will obtain a, something that looks like this. I already prepared it previously. It does have this triangular shape. The highest value for probability of x achieved at x equals 7, 6 out of 36 and then returning back to 1 out of 36 in increments of 1 36s. All right, now our last uh, objective is the following. Solve a couple of pro associated probability questions. So our first problem, find the probability that uh, the outcome sum is less than 5. Now if you want an outcome sum less than 5, then uh, you want an outcome sum that's either 2, 3, or 4. So find the probability that x equals 2, or 3, or 4. Now, since getting two outcomes, outcome sums of 2, 3, or 4 are a mutually exclusive, we could break this, break this up into the sum of the following probabilities. Probability that x equals 3, plus probability that x equals 4, uh, excuse me, a probability x equals 2 first, and that's a minor mistake there, probability x equals 2, plus probability x equals 3, plus probability x equals 4. Now, in order to obtain that sum, all I have to do is go individually, find the probabilities from the probability distribution, and then add them up. The probability of x, equal, x equaling 2 is 136 plus probability of x equals 3, 2 out of 36 plus probability of x equals 4, 3 out of 36. Notice again that uh, this is very convenient because the denominators are the same, all 36. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is what I have to add, so I get 6 out of 36. In other words, the probability is 1 6 after you cancel out, after you reduce. Alright, second question. What is the probability that the outcome sum is at least 5? So, let's take a look at that in a direct fashion first. In order to satisfy uh, the condition the outcome sum is at least 5, then you're going to have uh, several cases. Uh, probability of x equals at least is the probability that x equals at least five. Here's what we're trying to do. We're looking for the probability that x is at least five. So that means x is greater than or equal to five. Now there are several cases that will satisfy this condition. The probability that x is at least five is the sum of the probabilities uh, x equals five plus probability of x equals six all the way up to the probability x equals twelve. That is the direct approach, and it is not a very efficient one because there are too many cases. So it's probability x equals 5, plus probability x equals 6, plus that, 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 plus probability x equals 12. Now, that in itself is not incredibly difficult because all you have to do is add a 4, 36, plus 5, 36, plus 6, out of 36, all the way plus 1 out of 36. And it is possible, it is not an impossible task. This is the answer we would obtain. It's going to be 30 out of 36. Of course, uh, if our probability distribution was much more extensive, this direct method will not be something you would like to uh, complete. Instead, in a problem like this, it is uh, clever, it is better, it's more clever to consider the, a 
solving the problem using the complement rule. Now I'm going to here, I'm going to write here what the complement rule says. The probability of an event is the pro is one minus the probability of its complement. This is a rule of probability. So what I'll do is I'll apply it in this exercise. We'll have to just figure out what is the complement of uh, x being greater than or equal to five. Well, that's uh, x uh, not being greater than or equal to five, right? So the probability that x is greater than or equal to five equals to one minus the probability that x is not greater than or equal to five. Well, that's the same as one minus the probability that x is less than five. And you may recall that we already did that part right here. So it's one minus one sixth. So probably the probability of x being less than five is one over six. So what is one minus one over six? It's five over six. Uh, incidentally, I did not reduce my previous uh, result. My previous result was 30 out of 36, but if you do reduce it, they're both divisible by 6, so divide by 6 gives me 5, divide by 6 gives me uh, 6. So I did get the same answer, the same correct answer, but this is a much more efficient way of uh, approaching the problem. Okay, so our objectives have been completed. Uh, this is it for this lesson.